Hi, Katie Harmon here with Pink Polish Design. It's been a minute since I've posted on YouTube. I've been very active on a lot of social media, but I let my YouTube off for about a year and a half while I focus on other things. A lot has happened, so let me tell you all about it. Uh, in the meantime, I have a illustration here kind of fun illustration with a cup of coffee with its boxy little inclusion in it. Uh, it's just a fun little concept that I sketched up about two weeks ago that I've been dying to paint. So it was really fun. I use a certain technique on this you'll see later for the wood grain tabletop that I really have been experimenting with. So it's fun to have a bigger piece with a lot of tabletop uh, to play around with. So. Tell me what you think at the end in the comments and I uh, will tell you all about what's been going on this past year. So uh, if you have ever created a YouTube video, you know these videos take a lot of work and the previous way that I was creating those videos was very time consuming. So I'm really pleased to share that I have found a way, uh, thanks to a new iPad I got for Christmas, to create these videos fairly high quality and uh, easily add voiceovers and title slides and all of that fun stuff that you need to do for a YouTube video. So I've made this a lot more streamlined after some experimentation and I think this will be a lot more sustainable to continue updating my channel and adding content. Uh, there's a lot I want to do with this channel in addition to just general vlog updates and time-lapse artwork. I would love to actually share some uh, experimentation with new mediums and new supplies. I actually have a pile of supplies here that is uh, that are just waiting for me to try them out and I would love to do that here on this channel. I also would love to share some of my favorite supplies with you all. Some of them you see here, uh, I have um, a certain brand of paint as we all do that is my favorite, certain brands of paper that are my go-to's, as well as certain pens and uh, things that I use for embellishments um, as far as, as metallics and that sort of thing. So uh, I think I'll probably be putting out a video on my favorite things, my favorite art things here uh, in the next month or two. My life slows down a bit when it comes to summer. So I'm looking forward to maybe making some uh, additional content that I might not normally have time to create. So if there's anything specific you wanna see, uh, mention it in the comments. I do really pay attention to those and I will make an effort to include that. Um, as always, all the supplies that I use in this illustration will be listed below. And many of them you can find on Amazon and I will include those links as well. So I will apologize in advance for this footage. I actually uh, I have been intending to take some footage for YouTube for quite some time and uh, I have a way to do it with some, uh, I have a, a tripod mount that mounts to my desk that allows me to film it from overhead uh, as a, a long arm sort of tripod. I don't even think it's technically called a tripod, but I'm not quite sure what else to call it. And it hooks my my iPhone in there and I can take great footage. However, when I initially filmed this footage, I had intended to post it to Instagram stories, which is uh, portrait orientation. So I filmed it all in portrait orientation and then decided I was going to make this YouTube video, which means I cropped it down in closer, so I lose a little bit of video quality, as well as um, there may be a, t a few points where I go out of frame painting uh, due to changing that orientation. So next time I will orient the camera correctly for YouTube, and we will crop it for Instagram if I want to post it there. Uh, so things going on in my life. I've really taken the last year to focus creating better art. Um, not that what I was creating previously was bad, but I wanted to push it to the next level, really work on shading and shadows, uh, which I kind of ignored entirely previously, as well as uh, 
doing a few more details in in watercolor instead of um, just kind of using the ink as a crutch for certain things um, for shading and for certain detail uh, that I, I would have um, for example the highlights in the, the coffee cup here uh, a year ago I would have inked those uh, they would have had a black rim and uh, sometimes it's better to do things in a softer manner Something else I've discovered is using uh, gray and sepia ink. I do that a lot for uh, details in the background or uh, details that I want to come across softer. In this case, when you see me later ink the fox in the coffee cup, I wanted that to kind of dissolve into the coffee because this fox is curled up in the cup of coffee. Kind of like a hot tub, right? Uh, and I wanted that to have a, a softer edge to it, so uh, I lined that in sepia ink, which just gives it a little bit different look uh, than the, the stark black contrast. So you'll see me do that a lot. Um, again, in the background here, when I actually go in and ink the, the gaps on the tabletop, when I ink the detail on the tabletop, I do that in gray ink and sepia ink, and that gives it a lot softer look. Um, it doesn't compete so much with the foreground and I, I really enjoy that. Uh, so you also will notice um, I've been really obsessed with geometric shapes lately. Not so much in this illustration but if you go look at my Instagram feed um, I have a whole Inktober line of illustrations where I kind of focused on creating a border and breaking it. That was a really fun experiment and it came out with some really phenomenal illustrations that I'm really happy with. Um, those illustrations currently are showing at a tattoo parlor in Olympia called Sorry Mom Inc. I also currently, until the end of June, I believe, have artwork up at uh, Lake Wilderness Lodge in Maple Valley. That's been a really fun showing and I, I focused on my fantasy artwork for that. Uh, so you have some of my Celestial, uh, I have one called Orbit that's up there with a girl with planets uh, orbiting her head, um, as well as one with a girl looking at her hair. It's called Split Ends, and her hair is actually sprouting into leaves at the end. A fun concepts, going kind of getting outside of my box, uh, really getting outside of any reference that I could come up with, and uh, doing something unique, kind of like this piece here. Um, it's something that that is unique and uh, that's where I want to go I, I really want to do I want to grow my skills in art to a point where I can draw things straight out of my imagination and uh, I know I will never be a realist artist that's just not an interest of mine but to be able to create illustrations that really give you pause uh, to think about them and really kind of um, tie in emotionally for you, uh, whether it makes you laugh or cry or makes you think about something in your own life. Uh, I, I want that kind of, without the realism, that uh, pop surrealist sort of feel to my artwork. And I think I'm getting there. Um, I am very inspired by a lot of artists. Uh, I love James Jean. I picked up an art book of his this last year and have, it, his work is just phenomenal. Um, as far as, you know, current YouTube artists, I'm still obsessed with Audra Eclair. She has, if you haven't checked out her videos, they are amazing. And Danica Sills, watching her progression in art. Uh, her style is probably the closest to mine here on YouTube that I've found. Um, her techniques are, are very, how, how she goes about putting together an illustration is very similar to my own technique. So I've really enjoyed watching her progress and, and actually um, I've kind of followed in her, inspired by her footsteps there to branch out and I've started dabbling in acrylics, which I am still a long way from doing an acrylics video for you all, but I, it's been a really great journey experimenting with some new mediums and um, I think that really even if I don't ever go into creating acrylics as my main medium I think 
dabbling in these other mediums really they really give you perspective on the medium that you're using and sometimes teach you things about how you work that you can apply to your main sort of medium. Um, there are a few reasons I love watercolor illustrations and, and things that I've discovered this past year. Um, I really love the fact that uh, watercolor is almost instantaneous gratification. Uh, when you work with acrylics and oils, you need drying time, especially with oils that can take months or a year to dry um, and to do those layers. Uh, watercolor, I have about max three days. Um, this particular illustration is not super complex and it's it's an 8x10, it's not huge. And it took me probably four or five hours to do the actual painting itself. And then about two hours to do the original concept sketch. So that's only six hours I've invested in this piece and that that's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong, but it's uh, it's that instantaneous gratification. You have an illustration in just a day or two that's complete. Uh, whereas in other mediums it takes so much longer. Um, there's so much time involved and so much energy. So um, I really like that. I like that this this medium tells me when I'm done. I am someone that would probably work and rework and keep working and sometimes I overwork my watercolors but for the most part I I will hit a point with an illustration where you, I will see that the paper is going to break down if I put another wash on it. Um, I can tell that if I ink that anymore um, I'm going to oversaturate the paper and ruin it and I can see those warning signs now maybe previously couldn't and now with those warning signs I can actually uh, I, I, I can separate myself from the illustration and say okay this is as far as I can go with this it's done and that's really valuable to me in creating continuing to create new artwork and continuing to push myself um, to do new things now, does that mean that uh, I won't redo an illustration? Um, these days I do that more than I did previously. I, um, I don't have a lot of patience for redoing illustrations. I find myself revisiting those sketches from a year or two ago, the concepts that I really like that probably did not turn out the way I really wanted. And so I can now revisit those with uh, greater skills and um, fix those details that I really didn't like and then uh, create a watercolor that's something I'm really proud of. Um, that's actually what happened with Split Ends, um, the illustration with the girl looking at her hair sprouting. Um, it's probably one of my favorite because I did feel like I really overcame what uh, the flaws of that original sketch. And in fact, I, um, I copied it over, inked it, still didn't like it, and ended up doing it again from scratch. And um, so I took my time with it. I took my time to do it well, and it really did pay off in a strong illustration. Um, I feel like this one as well, there are certain things that I didn't like in the initial sketch. Um, I felt like the fox dissolved too much into the coffee, and you couldn't really tell it was a fox. And so when I went in here, you'll notice I did a very light inking to start out with. Um, the reason for that was so that I could uh, play around a little bit more with my watercolor uh, details and then the, you'll notice at the very end there's a few places that I go in and I add that deep dark shadow um, with black ink if you've watched my videos before you'll know that normally I pop those details in at the beginning and just touch them up at the end so this was this was different and I've been doing that more and more where I will leave certain things to the end either to prevent them from getting muddy from the watercolor or to give myself more latitude to play around with it. Um, there's also a few other things you'll notice. Um, I left the pencil lines in the uh, in the saucer under the coffee. Those pencil lines are all still there and I didn't worry about erasing them. I actually like that uh, soft shadow to those those shadows that I put um, I 
I've been doing that more and more too. There's there's certain pencil lines I won't worry about. And see, this was the footage that I was talking about where um, I ended up with my head in the shot. Um, I will do better. I promise. Uh, this new space, I'm not quite um, not quite aware of where my boundaries are on my desk yet when I'm filming. So I will get better at that over time. I, and this is the the wood technique that I talked about. And uh, you'll see me do this more than once, but this is this is me playing around with it for this illustration. So thanks for hanging in here this long with me. This illustration is wrapping up. So let me tell you where you can find prints and the original of this piece up in my shop at pinkpolishdesign.com. Uh, take a moment to follow me on Instagram and see my daily pieces. Uh, there's a lot more content that I create that doesn't make it here to this channel. Uh, you can find me there under pinkpolishdesign.com. And if you like this video, take a moment to click the like button and the follow button to see more content as I post these weekly. Have a great week and see you next video.